following a successful exit from my last company, Corticon, which was a 17-year journey, leaving my residency in emergency medicine, ultimately selling it and running it for a public company called Progress, I had the opportunity and good fortune to sit back and think hard about what I wanted to do next in my life. I knew I wanted to impact billions of people in a very positive way. I knew that I wanted to use my unique skills and work on something that I was incredibly passionate about. And I knew that I wanted to work with a great team. I read a couple of books that really impacted my thinking at this time. The first was from Peter Diamandis, a book called Bold, that teaches us that the world's biggest problems are also the world's biggest business opportunities. I also read a book from Aubrey de Grey called Ending Aging, that it explores the fundamental mechanisms of aging, the molecular and cellular mechanisms, and talks about a number of ways that we can therapeutically target these mechanisms. I knew when I read these two books exactly what I was gonna do next. I created the big audacious goal to develop a company that would cure aging. Well, I'm very proud to say that I'm working hard on that company with an incredible group of people, including these two authors that are now backers and mentors. When I was in medical school 20 years ago, they taught us about all of the reasons that we die associated with aging. So diseases like cardiac disease, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, which all increase exponentially as we age. They taught us about the pathologies of each of these diseases. For example, atherosclerosis in cardiac disease. And they taught us about therapeutics that target these individual pathologies. For example, lipid-lowering disease that attack atherosclerosis and do a wonderful job in reducing cardiac disease. But what they didn't teach us or talk so much about is what these curves mean. So suppose that we were to cure all heart disease, actually eradicate it from this planet. Well, that would mean that on average, you would live about two to three years longer. But on the downside, it would dramatically increase the number of people on this planet that were living longer sick, doubling the incidence of Alzheimer's disease and many of these other diseases. As you see, the curves go straight up and to the right. Morbid thought, I know. The good news is that a growing number of scientists, investors, and entrepreneurs are working on solving this problem. We're working on targeting fundamental mechanisms of aging. So regenerative capacity, we know, decreases as we age. When our bodies are embryos, it's superhuman. We can heal from massive damage, and have scarless healing of injuries. Now, even when we're young adults, it's really quite strong. So we repair very rapidly from muscle injuries, from bone fractures, and we're constantly repairing this molecular damage, not allowing it to accrue to the point of disease. Now, this damage is a normal byproduct of metabolism. Just as when we drive a car, it gets dirty on the inside and out. We need to take it to a mechanic and get regular tune-ups, get the oil changed, get the tires changed. Same thing with our body. That damage continually accrues. And we have an inner mechanic that repairs that damage called regenerative capacity. The problem is that it deteriorates as we age. And as it deteriorates, the damage accumulates at a rate faster than our body can repair it. And ultimately, we start to see this all across our body. So our skin elasticity deteriorates. Our hair starts graying and falling out. And much more importantly, it impacts every organ internally and starts to rear its head in the form of loss of function, disease, and ultimately, our death. So now imagine if we can target therapeutically your regenerative capacity. Turn it on so your body repairs this molecular damage. And in doing this, we have the opportunity 
to treat and prevent many of these age-related diseases with single therapeutic approaches and significantly extend your healthy lifespan. So our research starts back just next door at Stanford University when one of our co-founders, Professor Amy Wagers, was a postdoc in Professor Irv Weissman's lab. She partnered up with colleagues in Professor Tom Rando's lab to do a Frankensteinian experiment that we call parabiosis. So they sewed together a young and an old mouse, they actually cut open the fur, sewed them together, and their circulatory systems fuse. So blood from the young mouse flows into the old and from the old into the young. And when this happens, they leave them together for 30 days, they sacrifice the animals and look at the organs and see some incredible things. So they see in the old animal regeneration of tissue, reversal of biological aging across a number of different tissues and organs. And interestingly, in the young animal, they see the opposite. They see accelerated aging. So this was published in a paper in Nature. And as broadly, it's even in the common media, you might have seen some of this, that young blood stimulates regenerative capacity. Now, some of us might be thinking, <laughs> there might be something behind these vampire myths. Right? But I'm sure that you'll agree that sucking the blood of young people is not a great therapeutic approach. <laughs> and fortunately, um, when Professor Wagers went to Harvard University. She got an appointment there and partnered up with one of our co-founders, Professor Richard Lee, and began looking for that proverbial needle in the haystack. What of hundreds of factors in blood might be responsible for these effects? So they looked for differences in concentration of circulating factors between the young and the old mice. And they first looked at any metabolite using the best available technology they could. They didn't find any metabolites. They looked at all the lipids. They didn't find any differences in lipids. Then they used a brand new technology called proteomics that was able to look at 1,300 different proteins in incredibly low concentrations where we've never been able to look before. And they found a little known protein called GDF11. Then it's in its active form decreases as we age interestingly, in both mice and humans. They took a synthetic form of this protein and they injected it into the mice. In the young mice, it interestingly did nothing. But in the aged mice, it reproduced the effects as if those mice were conjoined. So these were reported. Initially, Professor Lee reported, he's a cardiologist and cardiobiologist, reported the effects on the heart. It reduces left ventricular hypertrophy, a strong predictor of cardiac disease and mortality in humans. Professor Amy Wagers reported that it accelerates the repair of skeletal muscle to youthful levels. Gosh, I could use that. And Professor Lee Rubin, one of our other co-founders, is a neuroscientist and reported the effects in the brain. He reported that it increases the growth of blood vessels and vascularization and new neuron formation in the brain. So these were recognized by the American Association of the Advancement of Science as one of the top breakthroughs in 2014. And since that time, we and others have reported very broad effects across a number of different tissues and organs, and in a number of different animal models of disease, treating Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, other forms of heart disease, kidney disease, lung disease, really such an incredible finding. So perhaps most compelling of all is that this is the same protein in its active form between mice and humans. Now, we haven't tested in humans yet, what we, we have done is looked at levels of this protein in humans. Actually, Peter Ganz's lab out of UCSF looked at this. Almost 2,000 cardiac patients. What they identified is looking at a complex that contains GDF11 and a closely related protein, GDF8, that those that have the lowest levels of this protein, the lowest quartile, compared to the highest quartile of levels, have a much higher risk of disease and death actually seven times higher 
risk of death over a five to nine year study period. Higher risks of stroke, of heart failure hospitalizations, and of heart attacks. Now, this is really compelling data that suggests that we will be successful when we treat humans. Now, on the back of all of this incredible research, I put together an amazing team of people partnered with these Harvard scientists and some others and great drug developers and visionary investors to license out of Harvard University this broad patent portfolio to develop therapeutics that regulate GDF-11. Now, we're targeting a number of different age-related diseases that account for the majority of suffering from aging. So cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and age-related muscle dysfunction. So Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And we're doing exactly that at Elevian. Now this journey is going to be hard. It's going to require a ton of money. It's going to require many years. We're going to have setbacks. We're going to have failures. And we must recognize and appreciate the complexity of biology. But we will prevail because this problem is too important to solve. So key takeaways. By targeting fundamental mechanisms of aging, we have the opportunity to reverse biological aging, to treat and prevent multiple age-related diseases with single therapies, and to ultimately extend your healthy lifespan. Thank you very much for your interest. <laughs>